We are wondering what is happening to the world. Everything is changing. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really going to change. Our bodies will be so high tech, we won't be able to really distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. This is profound. She said the very idea of human beings being some sort of a natural concept is going to change and that our bodies are going to be so high tech, we will not be able to distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. This is the merger of man and machine. This is the transhumanist agenda. This is the World Economic Forum's official video from their own YouTube channel. Inside our own heads is the most complex arrangement of matter in the known universe. You might ask yourself, can we get to be superhumans? The original Industrial Revolution was driven by the discovery that you could use steam engines to do all kinds of interesting things. But that was followed by additional revolutions for electricity and computers and communications technology. We're now in the early stages of the fourth Industrial Revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. One of the features of this fourth Industrial Revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing but it changes us. There you just heard Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman for the World Economic Forum, say that the fourth industrial revolution is going to change us, change humanity. With the ability to visualize brain activity, for example, through a simple consumer-based EEG device, it gives us access to ourselves in ways that we've never before thought possible. It unlocks the black box that is the brain and enables us to um, really, truly be able to uh, realize an identity that is aspirational. There's now a scientific foundation for the effects of mindfulness on the brain, on the genome, on biological aging. And when the human mind does know itself, then you get the potential for a new renaissance that restructures itself in terms of our relationship to life, our relationship to the planet, our relationship to work. We need a different economic model. And by that I don't mean capitalism versus communism. What I'm talking about is a shift in the system along the lines of the two big changes that happened in the 20th century, Keynesianism, with a much greater focus on health and education and the role of government working with business, and then a reaction against that in late century to neoliberalism, where the focus was on free markets, freedom of the individual, and getting governments out of the way. We need a shift to a new system that will allow us to meet the basic needs of every human on the planet, that will live within planetary means, that will be fairer, and that will be focused as its key goal, not on growth per se, but on maximizing human well-being. And history tells us that a value shift is triggered by creation of a new story about how we want to live. Now, they were talking about this new economic model not being based on hard work or being a business owner or creating wealth and success. They were talking about a new global economic order that will be fairer, they say, and essentially redistribute wealth, your wealth, as they see fit to lower the standards where you are in your countries or in some countries and raise them in others. So the goal is no longer, I want to be less bad, less monotonous, less unsafe, less unjust. It's really about a diverse, safe, healthy, and just world with clean air, clean water, clean soil, clean energy. Together we are fighting to preserve our fragile climate from irreversible damage and devastation of unthinkable proportions. Are you beginning to see the crisis has accelerated the 2030 agenda and global governance? and how they use public figures such as celebrities to help sell it to the public because people do not trust governments and institutions. Now, of course, the fourth industrial revolution will be sold to humanity as a way to better mankind, a word which they don't want you to use. Mankind, the UN doesn't like that. They want humankind, right? Anyways, they will make paralyzed people walk again. 
They will help the blind to see. And while this is all amazing and great, history shows us that time and time again, things that could be used to benefit humanity are often weaponized and turned against humanity. Humans have always been using tools, but because of the recent advances in technology, we're beginning to have machines that can augment us in all sorts of interesting ways. I was the first person in the world to be able to voluntarily move my legs while stepping in a robot by exciting the nervous system using electrical stimulators directly onto the spine. We believe that a cure will be possible if enough of the right people have the will to fast track a cure for paralysis. The prediction of 5 million jobs lost by 2020 to technology is serious, but it's not the main question. Construction, manufacturing, services, public health and education, these industries will still exist. The main question is, what will be the future of work? How will we define work? How will we share the wealth? One of the things that I think is so essential to free and open societies is freedom of thought. Um, and up until now, the conversation we've been having is around freedom of speech. Once we can access people's thoughts and access people's emotions, um, we have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts, to think creative thoughts. And in a society where people fear having those thoughts, uh, the likelihood of being able to enjoy progress is significantly diminished. Did you just hear that? She said right now the discussion has been around free speech, but basically once we get that out of the way, <laughs> once we get access to people's thoughts and once we get access to people's emotions, we need to create a framework for people to think in so people aren't scared and so people are safe. This is absolutely terrifying. Talk about thought police. Uh, they are fully intending and telling us right now that they plan to have direct access to your thoughts and to your emotions and be able to manipulate them as they see fit, of course, for the greater good. We need to take responsibility at every level of society, from the individual and the personal to the institutional to the global, to adapt to these technological challenges and changes which are redefining what it means to be human, what it means to work, what it means to be completely embedded in this world. This is not about saving the planet. This is not about equality. This is about control. Many of the jobs will be taken by robots, so they will redefine work and what it means to work. They want to redefine what it means to be human and determine for you your role and your future of being essentially a transhumanist uh, cyborg uh, integrated into this new control grid. Now, right now, we are witnessing the control demolition of the current system of control by design in order to usher in this new transhumanist agenda, this new system of global governance, this new digitalized system of control where we will be unable to distinguish organic life from artificial. We won't even have access to our own thoughts or we'll have access to them, but we won't even be able to control our own thoughts and emotions because they're going to do that for us because we're going to be tied into their grid system. <laughs>